Yeah. So, Jose, welcome. How are you doing today? All good, man. All good. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for being on, man. Thanks for being on. So it's your first time on, and as I like to do with all SEOs, I always like to find out how an SEO got into SEO. So with that said, how did you become an SEO? Um, so, okay, so I did, a, I did a master's degree in marketing communication, okay? And then mm -hmm. after I finished, it, the, the master was like really orientated towards you know, like really big businesses type of marketing structures. And I was like, nah, this is, doesn't look right for me at this point in my life. So I went and started working for startups, basically for, mm -hmm. for a few years. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I ended up working with like three different startups. And in one of them was, um, I was working like primarily on the website and trying to make it work. And then we're working with an agency doing mm -hmm. SEO, PPC. And I was thinking, wow, this sounds like super interesting in the world of digital marketing. This, this looks like something that I want to do. So I joined another startup that was an agency. So we were like three people plus a few contractors here and there. Mm -hmm. And there's where I really started to, you know, do SEO properly. And I did properly mm -hmm. SEO and, um, a few, you know, black hat tricks on the way, you know, because it was like a really small, a really small company. So yeah, yeah. You, you learn a little bit of everything. Yeah, um, early days. So, man. And then from there, <laughs> yeah, 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 no, it's insane how it was back then to what yeah. it is now. Um, yeah, now, now it feels like, you know, we're getting our, our lab coats, you know, and it's like, oh yeah, everything is really scientific. And then, you know, like 10 years ago, it was like, yeah, just buy links, you know, nuts, you know, just go nuts and buy links and that's it. And then comments on, on the WordPress blogs and shit like that. So, uh, yeah, really different. So that's essentially how my, my journey started. And then from that, from that agency, I went to a bigger agency. A medium sized agency. And mm -hmm. then from there, I went to Bill Visible, where I work with you. And then, yeah, and now I jumped to client side, you know, to a, a different kind of SEO. Similar, but different. <laughs> different in what way? Um, I think, I think agency side has the beauty of being able to work in like many different verticals, for example, like even if you are in e-commerce, for example, you can, you can, you know, have a, a shop about something completely different one day and another thing, and another shop another day, you know, it's very different, same, mm -hmm. same space, different website. Um, but client side, it, it is mainly just like the client, like one client, and then you own everything from, from the strategy. Mm -hmm essentially. So yeah. like both success and failure are on you. And when you're in agency, you know, you want to make it a success, but if they don't end up implementing stuff or anything like they're on their own, like you, if you hit a wall, that's, that's what it is. And you're sort of like, well, you know, job done. Mm. So I think in a way it feels more, um, yeah, more personal. Like that is like, you have to do the politicking of like going around and trying to find who is in charge of this, who is in charge of that. And mm. when you're in agency side, I think sometimes it just stops at your main stakeholder. Like, especially if you're working with bigger businesses and you have an SEO manager as your, as your point of contact and you don't have any visibility of what's going on in the company, just what the SEO manager tells you that it is, mm -hmm. um, it normally stops there. And when you're in house, it doesn't stop there. You just have to follow through the thread to try to, <laughs> you know, unblock uh, the the gates in a way. There's a lot of unblocking, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You just go with your, you know, like with your unblocker, you know, just like pop. <laughs> try, try your best. Would you say you're more, um, do you focus on a specific area of SEO, whether it be technical, on-page, uh, on-page content, off-page, or analytical, or are you more of an, do you focus on all areas? No, I'm definitely more a technical SEO. Like, that's my, my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that doesn't mean that I'm not, I don't want to get into, like, content, for example, or, um, or analytics. Uh, by that matter. But for example, link building is something that I do now hardly ever. 
like before in agency side, especially like visible, I wasn't doing it at all. Mm -hmm. And now it's something like really ad hoc. It's more about advising, you know, the PR departments and how to, it would be great if we could get links to specific areas of the set and stuff like that, mm -hmm. but not active link building. So, but yeah, technical SEO, my main, my main thing. Yeah. It's the core of SEO, right? It's the foundation. If something can't be crawled, if the site can't be crawled, there's no, there's no SEO. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. You have to build the roads. Yeah. Yeah. So having worked agency side and created audits, let's say a technical audit and sending it over hmm. to client and essentially helping them to try to have the recommendations implemented. How have you found it hmm. being in-house and having to almost fight those battles from an in-house point of view, as opposed to when you were agency side? Yeah, I suppose agency side, um, or, you know, I want to, I want to say like generally, okay. Maybe mm -hmm. it was a little bit different because, you know, like we were, I think we were always trying to like execute as much as possible, but normally mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the, the top level side of agency side is more, okay. Once I finish the document, that is, that is almost like job done. Not exactly job done, but you know, that's what they paid me for is to find mm -hmm. the holes and then tell them how to fix them type of thing. Um, and in-house is the second part is what the SEO manager that you're giving your audit to has to do, which is essentially mm. saying, okay, so I need to fix this. The impact is going to be this. And um, based on the business needs, I know that I might be able to put in, you know, like these two or three things that are, have the highest impact and they don't, um, like mess the sprints or the, or, or the, the, the roadmap of the developers, for example, if they have to fix something, mm -hmm. um, or is aligned with the business, um, goals essentially so i can put it mm -hmm. in there so i can make it work um so it's a more yeah you have to follow through more on on client side than you do agency side perhaps mm. so let's say for a business leader who is expecting results from SE, uh, from seo what is that conversation mm. like with a business leader telling them we're not able to um, fully reach our SEO goals because we have X, Y, Z blockers, um, from different departments, let's say tech department or dev department, for example, how, how is that conversation? Yeah. Like? I mean, I mean, not nice. That's for sure. I mean, <laughs> obviously, um, uh, yeah, it's a tough conversation to have, but I think, I think it, it, it goes down to like, try to show you know, the willingness to make it work in a way, right? Like, for mm -hmm. example, like, it's not, it's not, I think the conversation shouldn't be like confrontational. It's more about, okay, so if you say that your business goals are X, Y, Z, I know that at least, you know, with SEO, I know that we can fulfill X, right? Which is perhaps, you no, know, you know, we know that if we bring X amount of traffic at the current conversion rate, then I know that we can potentially bring in X amount of money, you know, to the bottom line kind of mm -hmm. thing. So in a way, if you're not able, if you haven't been able to, to go through like the normal routes to get that unblocked and it has to go from top down, then if you, if you explain it like that, if you explain it like, look, I think if we, if we don't have to do everything in this tech audit, for example, I know that if mm -hmm. we do this, we will get, you know, like 30 or 40% of the, of the benefit, right? So if yeah. we can block this, then, then you'll be able to get, you know, 30 or 40% of your business goal that you're telling me here. It's, mm -hmm. it's about aligning it with what they need, right? Because at the end of the day, even if, if they are the CEO and they are in charge of everything in the company, like they are, you know, they want to be successful at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's just, a like trying to, trying to put it in a language that they understand. I once worked with a, uh, a brand and I asked a dev person if I can have a look at their server logs because I wanted to um, review it from an SEO point of view. And yeah. I was met with what the hell does server logs have to do with SEO? <laughs> and immediately yeah. there was this barrier that I had to overcome just to get the server logs. Yeah. What is it like working yeah. with developers in-house? 
Yeah, I think it depends on the size of the business that you're that you're dealing with. Like, for example, if you're working with really big companies, they have a they have a procurement department essentially. Like they have they have or or a security IT, no? That they mm -hmm. know. Like server logs are a really sensitive. It's a really yeah. sensitive area of of the business. Like they get you pre, if you get them unfiltered, you get everything, right? Mm -hmm. So like. It depends on the size of the company. They will probably restrict you in that regard. But mm -hmm. what you have to do in there, I think, is tell them, you know, what exactly do you need? Like, if it's because, like, if you go, like, with a blank statement, like, I need the server logs, I think you're going to feel more resistance than if you say, look, I just need, you know, 30 days of logs from the Googlebot user agent. I just need to understand how Googlebot understands your site. And that mm -hmm. way I'll be able to, you know, mm, uh, like translate that into a strategy that will help your business in a way, right? So if you, I think it's all about like narrowing down to what exactly you need for what purpose. And normally if you do it that way, it normally goes easier than if you say, just give me everything or just give me the, yeah. the keys to the kingdom in a way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's this this um, engagement with non SEO is becoming a very important aspect of SEO. I find that more and more people hmm. are focusing on it. I even know some brands these days they have an, uh, a project manager that's specifically an SEO project manager with the title literally SEO project manager, and it just goes to show hmm. how valuable the implementation is. What do you think non SEOs um, think of SEO when they get requests to work on SEO items? Yeah, I think I think us as an industry, we have to look at the mirror ourselves in the mirror as well a little bit because I think a lot of people have had a bad experience with SEOs in general. Mm -hmm. Like I think there is a in. It's been changing, but I think in some regard, a lot of people, especially developers, have this feeling that SEO is is a snake oil in a way. You know, like yeah. it's just you know non-technical people trying to tell them what to do in a mm -hmm. way. And th those days are you know long gone in a way. And I think the our industry is becoming more and more professional, and you know it's it's becoming more and more knowledgeable about you know the intricacies of websites, generally mm -hmm. speaking. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's, I think it has to go to an individual level. Like if you're working, for example, with developers, then you have to adapt your type of conversation with developers because they are working day in and out on, you know, with technical jargon and they know, they, they know their, their space, right? So you mm -hmm. just have to adapt your requests or your languages to their space. If you're talking to, you know, UX designer, for example, about CRO, then you have to switch to what they, how they speak, you know, and mm -hmm. if you're talking with a business owner, then you have to switch to the language that they speak. So it's, yeah. you know, I think the opinion is normally not great at the beginning, but I think it, it, it then, once they know you and they know that you're, you know, good at your job and your suggestions are really aligned to, you know, their business objectives or their sprint objectives or whatever it is, then it goes more to like a personal relationship. I think it, I want to believe that. I want to believe that because <laughs> also that's my experience as well. Even when I've, mm -hmm. I've had that initial confrontation at the beginning, then when you start working with people, at the end of the day, it's people, just, just working with people. Yeah. So the moment that they know you and, you know, and they know that you, you mean well and that you're not here to just, you know, sell snake oil or anything like that, that you're here to, you know, make a difference, then it normally, it normally goes smoothly. Mm. Yeah. I think yeah. also from like, as an industry, we're very close with um, content writers, copywriters or creatives. And I think we have a, very, we have a knack of explaining ourselves to copywriters where we can, uh, paint a picture with words, whereas developers, there's SEO and developers, there's this special relationship between the two of us, because I think we think in a very similar way. Um, mm. But developers, I found that they are very much uh, data driven. So if they see data, even if it's on a spreadsheet, right? they're able to link ABC and then see the big picture, but it, just using words yeah. with them, 
doesn't really land as it would if you were speaking with copywriters, for example. And yeah, unfortunately, some uh, brands, they still think SEO is a silo and they keep SEO as a silo. As, as a silo. What would you say to a brand mm. who still regards SEO as just one, one pod? Yeah. So for me, that's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> so <laughs> the only way that you can make SEO work realistically is if you, if you put SEO, um, in the product teams, like mm. right, right next to the developers in the same way that you have, you know, normally if you work in, in like bots, right? Like if you work, if you work in, in peaks or scrum, whatever, and you have like your backend developers, your frontend developers, your iOS, Android developers, your UX and your PM, then SEO should be in that conversation as well. Like even if you work across different departments because they have different responsibilities, if you're not in that conversation, it's failure because SEO is not, it's not like any other marketing department. It's not like, it's not like PPC or it's not like email. It's not it's nothing like that. It's, it has to be at the core of the technology because that's, mm -hmm. that's where the change happens. So. Mm -hmm. Like making SEO a silo or its own thing, it normally doesn't work. Like I haven't seen it work ever. Yeah, I completely agree. <laughs> it's a shame that <laughs> some brands view SEO that way, but I think the more SEO is evangelized across a business, the better the results mm. uh, the business receives. I always say you can tell the level or you can tell the state of SEO in a brand just by looking at the website because you get a sense of one, whether there's an SEO person in-house um, and two, mm -hmm. whether that person has the ability, if that's, a, if that's the right term, to interact with the different departments because the more they can interact with all those departments, the more the awareness of SEO is spread across the entire business. And then the, the business eventually becomes an SEO first, uh, digital business. Yeah. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think also like th there will always be examples where, you know, SEO has been embedded in the company in certain, in a certain way, for example, for so many years, like for someone like they are really close to the editorial department, right. And mm -hmm. they have nothing to do with the technology side. So, you know, like sometimes, even though you see a website that, you know, their SEO could be, could be better. It might be because, you know, that, that relationship is, you know, sort of different to what we conceive SEO normally, right. no? Yeah. So, and those SEOs are working towards making that a reality, but depending on how big the business is and depending on their ways of the business, then it's hard to change that dynamic. Um, mm. so yeah, it, it, yeah, it's, um, you can definitely tell if SEO is part of the technology side of the business. Um, but sometimes some people, they are just restricted by, you know, business constraints in a way. So, mm. you know, we can judge, we, we can judge that much, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I find that there's this, like you mentioned SEO being regarded as a, a snake oil type of, um, industry or business. I find that some business leaders, let's say a CMO, for example, they may find SEO mm -hmm. daunting because there's, there's, there's something about SEO in that it's a very new industry. Um, digital as a whole um, is new when you compare it with traditional marketing. And a lot of um, business mm -hmm. leaders come who are uh, now digital, have a traditional marketing background. And they sort yeah. of understand all the different channels, PPC, um, email, even social, which is newer than SEO. But when it comes hmm. to SEO, it's very daunting to, to get their head to, to, to really grasp. And yeah, because of that, they tend to want to stay away from SEO. They shy away from SEO. What would you say to, let's say, a CMO who thinks they might need SEO, but is not entirely sure, and they they want to shy away from SEO because of that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think 
the reason why you're there as an expert is because you're really good at your field of expertise, right? Like a CMO doesn't have to know everything about everything, right? Like mm -hmm. I don't, like they don't have, they, 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 they're just there to sort of like direct the ship in a way. Mm -hmm. you know? So I think what CMOs need to understand is that SEO as a channel, you know, it is very profitable in a way because it's a, it's a, it's a free channel and you would never go to a, like a, imagine that you start a shop, right? And you would go, you would never say, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go to, you know, some random street with no people. And then I'm gonna say that this is my business in a way. And I'm not gonna tell anyone, you know, I'm just gonna, <laughs> you know, put the business in there and that's it. Like you would never do that, right? So mm -hmm. SEO is sort of similar. It's like, it's sort of like trying to, you know, like put the roads and, you know, making it nice so people can go through the corridors of your shop and stuff like that versus, so you, you're not thinking, I'm not, I'm not having that, right? Like you want to have a really successful shop with roads for people to go through them through nice corridors so people can look through the, you know, areas of your, of your shop to buy stuff. So yeah. And, and it's our job to make them understand as well. Like it's, it's, it's not their you know, it's, it's, it's not on them to understand SEO, it's on us to, you know, translate because they want to have a successful department, right? A successful marketing department in a way. So mm -hmm. it's our job to say oh, SEO, to make it a successful, you know, a successful channel, you have to do this. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think, yeah, it's on us. And I think we're getting we're getting a lot, a lot better at showing the commercial value of SEO. I think in the early days, mm. SEOs would almost like speak SEO language, but that didn't necessarily yeah. translate to the C-suites. Whereas now we tie everything to revenue, right? And then we can trace everything. We can trace from crawlability all the way to revenue. And painting that picture hmm. and showing them the steps of how we get it, that makes it a lot more um, interesting, I find, for to, to business leaders. And also, they they want to engage with it more. They want to support the, um, the, the channel and help remove blockers. Having said that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. there are some brands who are not entirely sure on why they need SEO. What would you say to a business leader hmm. who says... I have PPC and that channel is working very well for me. <laughs> you're like, so you're laughing already. <laughs> that channel is it, great. They love yeah. it. <laughs> Everyone loves PPC, but no one, no one really wants yeah. to give SEO the time of day until they see their analytics. Right. And then they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't aware of this information. Well, let's say, um, a yeah. business leader who views PPC as, a a, a brilliant channel and they're getting great results from it and don't they don't necessarily see why they need to invest in SEO. Why would a business invest in SEO when they have other channels? Yeah, I mean, I'd say on PPC, uh, I would say stop it for a day, see what happens. <laughs> you know, I think it's, uh, yeah, I think, look, there's, you know, the, the reason why there are different marketing channels is because, you know, you you can reach your customers through different ways right mm. and ppc is a great channel you know especially when you're when you're starting up like when you're a small business for example or a medium business and you're not really well known and you don't really have the data to back up or oh, am i doing a you know am, am i doing it right ppc is great and the feedback loop of a ppc campaign versus an seo campaign is completely different. Uh, you can understand if a campaign is going to be successful with PPC in a couple of days. You know that you put a little bit of money into a few landing page, new landing pages that you're putting out, and you can see if people are going in, how they convert, you know, like it, it is great. It's a great mm -hmm. channel. The thing is that it's not sustainable. I think down like long term. I think you can have a return on investment on it, but if you are completely reliant on it, if you put all your baskets into that, then you're going to be unsuccessful at the end of the day. So it's about, you know, putting the right amount of investment into different areas so you can, you know, be a sustainable business across. So mm -hmm. the reason why I think you should, you should 
you know, invest in SEO is because it is the foundations of your business. When everything, like we've been through the pandemic, you know, all of us, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, like most companies, they shut off all marketing departments, they shut off PPC, they shut off that. So all, the only thing that remained almost in all cases was SEO, no? It was like how visible mm -hmm. your website was to your audience, no? So, yeah. you know, we don't have to get through another pandemic to understand that you need to, you know, have a solid foundation of your business to make it work. And that's what SEO is. It's a solid yeah. foundation for your business. So I'm pretty sure that everyone wants to have a solid foundation for their business and be, <laughs> you know, successful business owners for a long time. So yeah. that's, that's why you need SEO. Yeah, I completely agree. Like I always say, it's um, it's the core. It's my personal belief that SEO is the core of all digital marketing channels bar none and it's interestingly more than a marketing channel so for example it can be seo can be used as a development channel in a lot of cases where um business developers because we understand how what it takes to really drive an online business and how consumers i.e uh, users rather are the core of that the foundation of that mm. now speaking of yeah. users when it comes to uh, attracting users by uh, creating content or having content there is this thought that content is let's say 400 uh, 400 piece of um, article um, others let's say an e-commerce site will say well i don't need 400 uh, words for a, a plp um, the content on the site is what you see on the page. Others will say, well, an empty page without words is not content. There, there are different views of what content is. From an SEO point of view, what would you say, um, how would you define content? Yeah, so content is literally what users can read on the page. That is it, you know, like that's, that's, that's where it is. So um, I think in, in SEO, there's always like this, you know, dichotomy of what you want to show your users versus what, you know, Google is going to be able to consume, no? And that's why, you know, you always have, you know, like your, you know, drop down big descriptions that suddenly, <laughs> you know, occupy like half of the page, but they're like, oh, you know, like an accordion <laughs> type of thing or like text at the bottom, all that, mm. all that nice, nice stuff that, you know, in some cases it works, you know? So, um, content is, is everything that is on the page. So you have to be really mindful of what you're sh showing, especially your users, because those are the primarily the primary consumers of the, of the content on the page. And mm -hmm. then you need to be aware that there are other areas that you know users you know might not get to, but they they account for the understanding of the page to Google. So that mm -hmm. is you know the additional text on the page that like you were saying like you know for a PLP it might be you know 200 words, but you know like for a blog post it might be a thousand. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, content is everything that is on the page. Yeah, yeah, that's a simple way of putting it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, because so, it is as simple yeah. as that. Man. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 funny. Sometimes the simplest things is difficult for business leaders to to really grasp grasp, especially because mm -hmm. they might see or read um, best practices but from an SEO point of view, but it's pertinent to a specific um, industry. So let's say the, um, if you're a media site, then yes, you use a lot of words on the page. Whereas if you're an e-commerce site, yeah. then the page will be different, right? A PLP page will be different to an article page. It's still all content. Yeah. Yeah, now, exactly. Because it, 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 it ties back to the intent of the page, right? Yeah. Like what, mm -hmm. what do you want your users to, you know, to consume in your page? Do you want them to, do you, you know, do you want to tell them, you know, that what steps they have to take in order to do something? Or mm -hmm. do you just want them to buy something? Because if they, if you just want them to buy something, then just put what you want to sell. <laughs> That's pretty much it. As much information about that product and done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, for most people, they consider Google the, their main search engine for, for a reason. They Google dominates, right? Um, these days, yes. there is um, um, talks that um, TikTok 
can be a legit threat to Google. They now have a feature on TikTok where people, they promote people searching for information on TikTok. And I've read a couple of articles right. saying that uh, Gen Z uh, tends to use TikTok as their main search engine rather than Google. What's your take on TikTok possibly dominating or overtaking Google from a search point of view? Hmm. I mean, to be honest, I'm not a huge consumer of TikTok. I mean, to be honest, like I'm, I have, you know, like I'm probably the worst person to talk to about, you know, like <laughs> they have the capability to overtake Google, right? But like from from a like just a like a theoretical exercise. I mean, obviously, the behavior of people on how they search things it changes over time, right? That's mm -hmm. why you know we know that, for example, in you know the recent decades this in recent years people when they want to buy maybe like um like goods they they turn to amazon for example if they if that is available in their country right and amazon mm -hmm. as a search engine is like hugely popular for items and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that same for like maybe if people are looking for like guidance or 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 tips or stuff like that they turn to maybe youtube right and then you know youtube is a huge search engine as well that's why google bought them for i don't know <laughs> how much money they bought it like six billion or something, yeah. like, something crazy <laughs> like back in 2004 or something i can't remember <laughs> so so the, what, what i'm going with this is that the behavior of people of users change over time so i can see how people can turn to tiktok for like easily consumable content to search for things. But what I also think is that the infrastructure of Google and how Google is embedded into everyone's minds at the moment, it's it's a hard it's an uphill battle for any other type of search engine to compete with, right? Mm -hmm. Um yeah. and I think at the end of the day, when you want to search for specific things, still Google I mean Google still you know, in terms of um, in terms of market share in most countries, at least in Europe, it's like ninety plus percent, like ninety five, ninety six percent. It's been like that for years. So, yeah. you know, that doesn't mean that it's not going to change in the future. But I don't see how TikTok can, you know, overcome Google in terms of you know the experience as a searcher, right? Because you want to, I mean. As far as I understand, TikTok is only video, right? Like you, you, you yeah. search for things of, so, so it might be like for certain times, like Amazon or YouTube, like for certain things, TikTok might be better than Google. Like if you mm. want to, I don't know, like, you know, five tips for, I don't know, makeup or something like that. It might be better to look for a video than it is to search on Google and look through the different articles or the different videos or snippets that, you know, Google shows you So mm -hmm. it might be better. But generally speaking about search and the, and the experience of search, I don't see how TikTok can overcome Google. I don't know. What do you think? Like, because I like have you like have you explored this this idea? Like this topic? So it's it it came into my mind a couple of months ago when I saw. So I'm on TikTok and I I browse this as a as a consumer and I find it really interesting because mm -hmm. I think it's the leading platform that's changing the way people can possibly search or will possibly search one from a consumer okay. point of view people they tend to look at video as the um as the main form of content these days so before multimedia content the core the main form of content was copied text so you go on, you land on a page mm -hmm. and you read stuff. Now people are more interested in watching things, i.e. video. So video is the core of content, which is why Google is very much interested in video promoting it and also being able to crawl, read, understand it, right? So there is that yeah. aspect. Another aspect is that consumers, more and more consumers are becoming marketers in a sense. Because user-generated content, I think, in the next two, three years, is going to be, be very much prevalent in social media. And I think that's going to have a crossover to search. Social media, I think right now, influencers, the term influencers is still very much the leading thing from a social media point of view with non-marketers. 
but pretty soon that could be uh, user generated content because what a lot of brand what some brands are doing these days is hiring consumers to create content so people are content creators now which is you know a part of marketing and that mm. behavior i think could change the way people search because people wouldn't necessarily search for a, a specific thing they'll search for someone who's either commenting or has a viewpoint on a specific thing which is why events is a really um, um, a big feature in a lot of content creation so let's say i don't mm. know there's there's a movie coming out soon right uh with um uh, disney marvel black Pan black panther so that movie yeah. comes out, that's used as an event and a lot of people create content around that event. And because of that, mm -hmm. people are not necessarily only interested in the events, they're interested in people's opinion or comments of the event. So they go to certain people yeah. and I think that could influence the way people search and also influence where they search, i.e. if they want to look at someone's viewpoint on a specific event, they won't necessarily use Google. They might go with TikTok. Yeah. And as you mentioned, it depends on the contents that they're looking for, right? But if they're predominantly yeah. only interested in videos, then I think that could be the gap that sites like, uh, oh, I keep on saying sites. TikTok is also an app, more of an app now, right? Um, yeah. I think brands- Platform. Oh, oh, okay. Platform, that's it. That's a better term. I think platforms like TikTok will be that's their gap video as a as a right. content type which i think but, but how does very... that like yeah sorry maybe we're going too deep into this but like how how does it differ from like Search? youtube for example or instagram oh oh yeah, it'll be the, a similar thing with youtube but i think youtube and tiktok um 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 are closer battles than tiktok and google search but TikTok, from right. what I'm seeing, are promoting people to search for certain things. So let's say Apple Live event, right? Um, on TikTok, they'll promote people to search. When I say promote, as in they'll prompt people to search for Apple Live events using the platform. Mm -hmm. And this is different to, let's say, using Google to search for Apple um, Apple Live events, um, the next Apple Live event. They people might use TikTok and search for the next Apple Live event, find someone who comments on the next Apple Live event and um, use them as their source of information. Whereas before, right. they would use Google. But, yeah, no, I can see that. I mean, like, and like people commenting on what other people have done and people commenting on shows are, and like, you know, first time watching X, you know, it's hugely popular in platforms mm -hmm. like YouTube, I'm sure it is in, in TikTok. But, it, using your same example, they, I don't think they would check, you know, at what time is the Apple event being streamed in my country, for example, like that you would, you would normally go to Google to mm -hmm. for that kind of like information, right? Like, I yeah. think intent is very much behind, you know, the type of channel that you use in the same way that, for example, if I, if I look into, you know, fix something on my website or, or like I'm trying to, you know, find, you know, how to do something on or develop something. I might go to website, you know, like for our, like stack overflow, for example, or Google for a specific, oh, I got this error, how to fix mm -hmm. it. Um, mm -hmm. and then I might go to YouTube to check on a tutorial of someone actually doing it because I haven't been able to do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think intent is very much behind everything that we do in the type of platform that we use. So. I mean, I can see in that sense, I can see TikTok becoming something for those type of intents, but instead of like debunking Google completely, I think, <laughs> I mean, we'll, yeah, it's hard to see though. I mean, maybe I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm really wrong about this. And maybe like 10 years from now, I look at this video and say like, oh, <laughs> you know, how wrong was I? I think the way, um, the way I'm viewing it, really depends on the way people um, um, search for information and the platform that they use to search for information. So if they and also mm. the um, um, type of information they they want to 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 view or consume. And right now, I think all of that is up in the air. 
And that's why the question always sticks to, comes to mind whenever I speak with SEOs, because I'm like, can Google be talent? Because I, I also agree that they have a stronghold that they probably won't lose. I mean, even let's say YouTube, right? Or YouTube, it's video only. So if you're searching for something and you want a video only, yeah, maybe YouTube will be better than Google. But Google search mm -hmm. still has a plethora of content types. And the way I'm seeing it is if the content type that people are looking for is only video, will that change the platform that people use to search for content? That's yeah. the way I'm viewing it. Mm. And I, I think that could be the... the, yeah. the the, the path that other companies can challenge Google on. Yeah. You know what will happen in the end, man? Is that <laughs> Google will do a new feature snippet, you know, like a new feature to put in Google to, for people to consume that kind of content in there. Because we've seen it, you know, like for yeah. like the, the, the SERP that it is today is not the SERP that it was 10 years ago <laughs> or even five years ago, not even like last month. So mm -hmm. in, a, in a way, because they have so much data about how people you know, consume information, then they will, they will adapt to, you know, whatever it is, mm. um, that people want to consume on their platform, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they, they will consume everything. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the um, search was better, let's say, uh, a couple of years ago to what it is now? Like is SEO harder or easier these days? Um, SEO is, is like, it's always going to be harder from this point onwards. I think, I think everything is becoming so sort of like specific towards, you know, either the intent that you're using, the type of vertical that you are on, you know, like it's so, it's becoming so, you know, atomic, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, you know, like it works, you know, that's why like black same is like, oh, if you put content on the website, it will work. Hundred <laughs> percent. You cannot say that. It's impossible. You know, like for all the intents, all the verticals, like all, everything is impossible. It's so complex. I think our job is gonna, be, yeah, exactly. Our job is gonna be harder and harder. It's just gonna get harder. Um, but on the other hand, I think it opens up a lot of possibilities when it comes to it's like essentially because like there are other players that you know could potentially eat some of the pie from Google, so you can leverage mm -hmm. other channels that you search as part of their journey for users. Mm -hmm. So you can leverage those channels. And then for Google specifically, I think because <laughs> the, you know, but like, you know, that everyone is trying to sort of like game the system in a way, no, like that's sort of like <laughs> the uh, still a little bit of the mentality of, you know, as SEO, we, I need to understand how this works so I can game it to my advantage. No, mm -hmm. um, I'm the way Google is trying to move forward is to make that harder and harder and harder using machine learning. No? So mm -hmm. nobody knows what the recipe is. So nobody knows how to game the system in a way. Mm -hmm. No. So, and that's for example, like why they want to move away from, you know, links as a source of uh, authority. They want to move towards other signals now called, you know, EAT, but EAT is still probably like really link related as of yet. Um, so I think for the future, it's just going to get harder, but that's also why it's interesting. No, mm. it's, it's, you know, trying to, yeah, that, that's why SEO is not like PPC that you know, <laughs> it doesn't change that often. Yeah. The complexity is beautifully complex SEO because yeah. it, it yeah, stimulates yeah. all the different, I think there is, um, there's something about SEO that stimulates our, our mindsets, SEOs that get into, uh, that are SEOs. It, it just. It just, there's so much you can do, right? You can be, yeah. you can focus only on content. You can be, focus on technical. You can even be a, almost like a, a, a PR person. It's very vast, the industry.
the discipline. Yeah. And even within like certain like specific areas, you can go through, you know, like super technical on one specific thing. Like for example, yeah. are you really an expert on e-commerce JavaScript SEO? You know, like it's, like it's, <laughs> yeah. it's not even e-commerce or JavaScript SEO. It's like <laughs> combine both and then yeah. be a micro niche into this. No. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be harder, but also it will open opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. What's been your favorite um, algorithm update from Google? One that made you say, "Oh, that was a freaking good one. I love that one." <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if "good one" is probably like the the, the right word, but I think in terms of you know life changing for us as a as a you know as as SEOs. I think probably the biggest ones have been Panda, Penguin and Human Bird. No? Like those mm. have been like sort of like the big, big earthquakes in the in yeah. the SEO industry, I think. because uh, all the latest ones have been more subtle. No, like product, even like product updates and, yeah. you know, like even the, the more recent ones about, you know, content and EAT and all that stuff has been sort of been mild. You know, they remember like in, uh, what was it? It was like 2000, what was it? Like, like 2012, 13. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that like, era. I remember like yeah. the, the absolute Armageddon that, you know, like, the, <laughs> the updates were, you know, like, and, and that changed the industry. For good, yeah. You know, like you can still, yeah. People still game the system and try or try to game it as much as they can. But Panda and Penguin have been sort of, you know, killers in 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 that sense. Um, and I wasn't as knowledgeable about SEO as I am now. And I'm and I can see people that had a, a lifestyle based on SEO doing certain things that they can, they couldn't do any longer because mm -hmm. it, it stopped being a possibility. So yeah, yeah I think. To this day, I would, those... I would probably say, yeah, one of those panda or penguin. Yeah. To this day, those are still my two favorite um, updates. I that was just perfect. That was like a one-two combo from Google. That's the yeah, way yeah, I view exactly. it, and it was like just Jack like, Cross, oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was the perfect thing they needed at the perfect time because it took away all. Yeah the problems, um, content related, and it was just like, perfect. Yeah. 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 No, I think that, that those were good ones. Yeah, for sure. Now some brands, right. They get hit by an algorithm update or release and they say, oh shit, mm -hmm. now we really have to do, do things SEO wise. What would you, what do you think mm -hmm. a brand can do to their site before they get hit by an algorithm update. So I think it depends a lot on like what your strategy has been for the past years about how you have you been conceiving SEO, right? Because if you are the type of brand that has been, you know, trying to get ahead of the game by, you know, like buying links or doing PBNs or doing, you know, this kind of like sort of like gray hat, black hat SEO, mm. you know, that down the line, you're going to get caught at, down the line, especially if you become like, you know, known right because yeah. i think like even as a, as a google as a google engineer you're just looking at the you know what's going to bring the most amount of impact for you know certain specific verticals maybe so you look at the top sites that are ranking there and if you see commonalities you say oh i don't like this so i'm going to try to sort of like tweak you know our formulas or our way of doing things to to try to get these results out of the search in a way mm -hmm. you know so if that's been your kind of seo you're doing it wrong you is not sustainable so but on the other hand if you've been doing seo like trying to you know like build good content trying to serve your users and that and you get hit by an by an update i would say don't panic no because sometimes they either get it wrong and it is how it is and then you just have to like wait sort of like almost like head down and then you know like trying to focus on your own path like if you're still serving users you're doing it right so mm -hmm. down the line I think you you should still, if you, if that is your north star, serving your users, you should continue doing that, even if you get hit by, a, by an algorithm update. Um, and and I think generally speaking, like if if you're looking into, uh, it's good to have a look at what changes after an algorithm update. You should be up to date to what it is. But 
I think it becomes less and less relevant down the line, in my opinion, because yeah, we have to be closer to the business than to the, you know, than to the waves of SEO in a way, you know, like, mm -hmm. it's like cause, cause, cause like think about it from, from a Google's point of view, right? Like they, they don't want to like ruin businesses. They just want to serve their users. So in a way, if you are, you know, promoting that, if you're, if you are closer to serving the users the way they want to serve their, their users, then you're doing it right. So, yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, that's, that's how it should be. A lot of businesses, they view SEO. I think they kind of take it for granted because they see that they get traffic from SEO and they think, okay, we just need to get more hmm. traffic, but they don't focus on users, as you mentioned. And it's a, it's a big shame because the users is, is, should be always the focal point. And I think from, if you were to think, it, think about it, SEO, we optimize websites, right? To acquire users and we acquire users via Google, mainly as a search engine. Mm -hmm. In a way, the users we're acquiring are Google's users, right? So if we're not serving Google's users, why would Google continue to serve our sites to their users? You know, it's, it's a yeah. roundabout way of thinking about it, but it keeps users at the focus of what we SEOs do and what businesses do from an SEO point of view. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I think like this, that's the way it should be. Also, I mean, we also, we need to keep an eye on what Google is doing just because they want to be the platform that serves the content at the end of the day. I think look, we've mm. been seeing that yeah. as a as a trend anyway, you know, like with, you know, knowledge panels, feature snippets, and, you know, and, and now like the ever coming thread of voice only search, no? <laughs> uh, a, a, a search without SERP in a way. <laughs> I think it's, 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 a, it's a valid concern to have, you know, like that Google is trying to, you know, steal our users still, which is, they're not ours, as you said, they're theirs. Um, but in a way, it's good to keep them in check in a way because um, you could search, if search is a huge part of your business, then that can change quickly. Um, mm -hmm. But as long as you have users in mind, it should be fine because if you think about it, if Google is not in your vertical, like if you're not on flights or if you're not in jobs or if you're not in one of these areas where Google has a presence now and they are serve, actively serving your user base, people are still going to need that good or service that you're offering, right? So if they know mm -hmm. you and you're able to retain those, those customers, they're not going to go back to Google. They're going to go back to you in a way. Mm -hmm. So if you serve them, then you will be much better ahead, even if Google tries to steal your space in the industry. Mm -hmm. What's your take on voice search? Um, uh, to be honest, I think, uh, I think it's a hard one. I think, um, people have been fearing it for years, for... right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Voice. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think people, I don't know. I think we, we, we normally try to fall down into this, you know, sensationalism roots, right? It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, this new thing is going to be the thing, you know, and you know, people are not going to use a computer anymore. It's all about VR, you know, and, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and, and, you know, maybe down the line, I think, I think voice search, it, it is valid for many use cases, same as when we're talking about TikTok, no, mm -hmm. um, and voice search would probably become more and more, um, like prevalent for, for, for certain types of queries, right? Like mm -hmm. for, you know, events type of queries or, you know, calculate 2000 plus 320 or I don't know, or, yeah. you know, or, you know, take me to this street kind of thing, you know, like that kind of voice search, I think mm -hmm. it will become better and better and more prevalent. But if you ask me about like SEO specifically, like how voice search is going to shape SEO, I don't know, man, honestly, I think at the moment, I just see it as a big, um, it's like an know. open space, right? 
like an unknown unknown at, at the moment. So it's a bit like a, it's like a, yes, it's, it's a buzzword, man. At the moment, mm. it's just a buzzword, <laughs> right? Like you, like you can, like you can try to influence it. You can use a schema to try to make it easier for your search engines to consume it and then serve it in the way that users want, either by text or by voice or whatever. But um, like, I haven't seen it as something significant as of yet to worry about. Um, or to like completely change or, or completely do a stream of work focused on voice search, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I, at least I haven't seen it as, yeah, as that important at the moment. Yeah, I think right now it's still just a, a, a different way of searching. It's not actually changing search or the intent mm. behind search. So until that intent behind search changes, it's, it's just... Instead of typing, you're using your voice. That's pretty much mm. pretty much it uh, for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah and, it, and, and it depends a lot on like what you're searching because like some, what I like to do always is look at like my my close circle and how they use search realistically, how they use or how they buy online and stuff like that. That interests me a lot because I'm biased because I'm an SEO and I do things in a certain way because it's easier for me to do X, Y, Z and, and maybe I'm more technologically savvy or whatever. So I normally look at, you know, my wife, my friends, my parents in, in, in different situations and see how they use, you know, search. Mm -hmm. And for example, voice search, I haven't seen anyone, anyone using it in any type of like situation, in the same way that, you know, you could use, for example, you know, Google Maps or, you know, like, or, 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 or normal Google to check on, you know, like a specific cinema time that you want to go to or, or about specific event, people will just go for search. They wouldn't go, when is this event going on? You know, like I haven't seen mm. anyone doing it. Right. Um, mm. But that doesn't mean it's, it's a small sample. That doesn't mean that other people are using it, but. I haven't seen it in the same way that I've seen, for example, people consuming lots of content through YouTube, lots of content through mm. Instagram, lots of content through TikTok, you know, still searching on Google, you know, like that, that, that kind of thing, or even like yeah. texting, you know, that nobody texts anymore. It's like, you know, just like voice recording, let it go and then done, you know, in, mm. in a way I've seen that as a, as a change, but in terms of voice search, I haven't seen it. For me, this, my, I haven't seen any, um, non-marketers or non-developers use it the people i've seen use it are either developers and or marketers mm. from some from some yeah. marketing discipline yeah that's true it still hasn't permit um reached into the uh, um consumer ordinary consumer i think yeah. Also, if you think about it in terms of like the products that Google or Amazon, like Alexa, Google Home, you know, that kind of thing that they're, that, they're, that, that is the kind of people that would use voice search as yeah. a primary platform. No? Like the, mm. the, those are the target in a way. Like I, I know people that they have Amazon, like that, that they have, you know, Alexa at home or they have, you know, Google Home. Uh, and the way they use it is for, you know, like put music. So yeah. to, 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 to Turn, actively yeah. do something in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Never, yeah. never about, you know, like, you know, like search me for something, right? Like they've always mm -hmm. been like, oh, turn on the lights, put a timer for 20 minutes, you know, give me, send me the recipe of X. Uh, mm. I don't know, like at what time is that TV show or something like that. But like, but that, for example, I've, I've seen it only a couple of times. Because mm. someone asks in a conversation, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Know, the new season of X is going to come to this. And like, oh, really? And then people pulling out their, their phones and then the owner of the house goes like, how can I mean it? Let me show yeah. you how it is done in the, in the 21st century, you know? And they go like, oh, yeah, this, you know, Alexa, you know, what, what is the, when is the new season of X starting? Yeah. But that's it, right? So, yeah. yeah I haven't seen here, any actually. signs of, of, yeah, yeah, of like how that is of that being prevalent at yeah. all <laughs> so yeah we'll see we'll see again yeah um now for people interested in getting into seo how would you suggest they get into the industry and become an seo professional hmm um i think as a as a person that has been doing seo for a while if someone wanted to start now, I always say, 
look at the look at Google guidelines first because I think that's a good source of as a starting point is a good starting point, right? right? It is a it is a huge document. Like I I think last time I checked it was like 160 pages from that. Okay, and mm -hmm. I haven't read it. Like I think all I've read it once, and then after that it's been like specific areas that they've changed, right? Mm. And then but it's a good starting point. Like this, to know, you know, what Google is looking for from website owners. So you right. understand what the game is, right? So that is mm -hmm. the starting point. And second, build stuff. For me, the only way or the best way that I've always done or I've always learned is by doing something and, mm -hmm. and making it work. So like doing doing audits and stuff like that is great. Like if you're in a, on an agency like set up, but you will never understand what it is to implement something unless you do it on your on your own. So right. I would say read read as much as you can and then do do it because you will see what works and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's better than anything else. And doesn't matter, you know, if you know John Mueller has said X <laughs> or you know or whoever guru in the SEO industry has said Y, including myself. Like if I go to an event and talk about something, you don't have to believe me. You know, like you, you know. Test it. Do it mm. yourself and then get your own conclusion. It's good to understand what other people are doing because you cannot do everything. But if it's something important to you, then get up to a website, try to rank it. Yeah, I agree. That's the best way. Get your hands 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 dirty. Get get hands on with, with creating websites and optimizing it. It's the best way to learn and also show what you can do. Yeah. Also, Jose. one yeah. extra tip. Yeah. Try to sorry, one extra tip. Try to try to get a mentor. Like try to get someone. Like try to see someone that you wanna become and say, like, oh, I wanna be like that guy or that girl. Like I wanna, I wanna, I wanna do what they do. So mm -hmm. you know, try to get someone that really knows what they're doing, and then like either work for them or follow them or like talk to them so they can guide you on on that on that journey. Yeah. That is the, 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 the next tip. Read. Yeah. The build, final piece. And yeah. And then try to get someone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Because, because you will not do the same mistakes that they've done on their way. And you will learn yeah. faster. Your rate of improvement will be much, much faster than theirs if you don't make the same mistakes that they've done in the past. So, yeah. Brilliant it. tip. Brilliant tip. Jose, where can people find you online? So, I mean, I'm. I'm less active now because I've just had a child, so I'm less active now, but I'm 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 fairly active on Twitter. So you can follow me at JL Hernando. Um, and then I have my own my own website, which is jlhernando.com, where I write about normally about, you know, technical SEO stuff and JavaScript, which is essentially what I like to do on on my free time and on my working hours. So <laughs> those are the best places to reach me. Awesome. I will have those links in the description so people can get in contact with you. Brilliant. Thanks so much awesome. for your time, yeah. Jose. I hope you have a brilliant day. And yeah, pleasure, we can, man. We can catch up soon. Yes, definitely. Yeah, you too, man. Take Cheers, care. Man. Take care everything. Bye now.